I wish to glorify and magnify the Lord Jesus today. We need to give him all the glory. And one way we can really give him the glory is to testify what he does in our lives in a personal capacity. And I just want to thank Sue Holtz for being obedient because she got a word for me and she held back on that word because she thought there was some hard things to take. But she gave it to me and it really clarified things for me because unless you understand the walk that I've walked and the talk that I've talked over the years and just seen and known that God had a special place for me in my destiny and then having gone through all I did I said to the Lord where is my destiny and there was a saying not so long ago a few years back maybe 20 actually <laughs> Now that I come to think of it, they used to say to me, Jane, have you had a Gethsemane? And I'm like very indignant. No, Jesus had a Gethsemane for me. So I didn't think of suffering and pain because Jesus took it all. But I just want to share with you from Romans, this is just where I'm at. And I want to prove to you the wonders of God's word in the reality of the light and the glory of that word that comes alive in one's life. So a special thanks to Sue. I will actually read her word to you. Let me just um, give you the scriptures that I feel are very relevant at the moment. All my life, not all my life, but certainly since I've matured in the Lord, or hopefully, in a way, sort of, um, the one thing that I understood was that I wanted to become the manifest daughter of God, and I wanted to see things happen. So my reading is Romans 8 for the last two days, and that's exactly where the scripture brings us in. And the song that even Stu White wrote about our sons and daughters destined for glory. That's all part of my testimony and my destiny. But I just want to read to you that there is a scripture in Romans 8 and 17 and says, And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. And today we've spoken about peace that passeth understanding. That's one of his treasures. For indeed we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joint heirs to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. We will experience being co-glorified with him, provided that we accept his sufferings as our own. I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of the glory that is about to be unveiled within us. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters that's you and I. And it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruits of the Spirit also inwardly groan as we passionately long to experience our full status as God's sons and daughters, <laughs> including our physical bodies being transformed. For this is the hope of our salvation. So glory, glory to those scriptures that now substantiate my destiny. Thanks to Sue who consolidated it. She puts a little note in here and says, I was led by the Holy Spirit to pray for you, Jen, and under a powerful anointing of his presence. I saw Jen as an, on another platform standing and walking. And then I realized it's not here on earth, but in heavenly realms. 
walking in another realm. You look so young, yay. Not just translated, but transformed. So don't be concerned or anxious about what's happening here on earth. What you see or what you hear, just look and listen in the heavenly realm. It's where you belong. I belong in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is the word she gave me. Of course, Sue's always asking God questions. I remember when my children were small, why mommy this, why mommy that? And in the end, we end up saying, because pigs can't fly. Because we get so tired of all the whys. But Sue carries on with God and God's very patient with her. Anyway, it says, knock and it shall be opened to you. Should I ask about Jen, Lord? Why not? I hear, I don't understand, Lord, why this continues and happens. Will you show me? Then the Lord answers and says this, Jen is of my heart. Wow, wow, wow. And yes, for some, this is a hard thing. I require of them. Jen is a perfect example of one who stands in the fire of adversity. I sense his heart of mercy and compassion for Jen. And Sue says, I even cry as I write this, not to be angry or vindictive. Yet I am and will sustain her life for a purpose. Yay! One in which the world will see that I am God, the creator of miracles. Hallelujah. Be magnified and be glorified, Lord. I am and I will. Sorry, I can't just see that for the moment. I am and I will something her back from the brink of death, bring her back from the brink of death for my glory. Amen. Now I have already testified to you all getting rid of the spirit of death and fear. And that just confirmed it for me. I've got it all in pencil here next to this word. So to me, that's an answer to prayer. These are the days of my grace being demonstrated. The pain and the suffering are what my son went through for all mankind. Jen understands this firsthand and without complaint she suffers to a degree for mankind also. Wow, that's a tall order. Jen will be a trophy of my glory expressed through my love for her and ultimately for mankind. What a magnificent word that encouraged me because if you take it, sons and daughters, to manifest the glory of God and see the manifestation, even nature cries out. And I always knew that that's where I was destined for and I've understood it. And in another little way, I shared with you being teleported for that intercessory prayer I did. And then in my little portal on my bed in the middle of the night, I was complaining to the Lord and saying, I'm in bondage to my feet, Lord. I'm in bondage to these feet. They hold me up. I can't run and do anything. And the Lord said, well, cast out the bondage. And I'm like, I can't see that in the scriptures anywhere, Lord. I can't understand. Have I missed something? Cast out a bondage? So he said, go ahead. I said, just the same as I did to the spirit of death? And he said, yes. And this is very low-key. I'm just having a chin chat here with the Lord, you know. And so I said, okay, in Jesus' name, I cast out this bondage that's holding my feet. And with it must go infection and disease. And that night when I'd gone to bed, I had my one foot was blood red and with a raging heat in it. And I knew I had an infection in it and I had to step aside of the circumstances and allow the faith that I have in God's word to take over. So I climbed back into bed and the next morning, my leg was perfectly normal. Hallelujah. No infection, no swelling, no redness. I just want to share that with you because I realize that quite often 
unless we learn to step aside of the earthly things, and that's what Sue was saying, I see you walking in the heavenlies, we can all walk there. We just have to release earth and the circumstances and the pain and the everything else that goes with it. We are so trapped into systems. We forget about God's magnitude. We've got to get there where we know and understand as he speaks to us in the quiet of the night. It says, cast it out in my name. Jesus said in, in John 17, you haven't asked for anything in my name. Now ask in my name and I'll give it to you. We need to take these things seriously. It says, give honor unto him. How do we give honor to God? By honoring his word. His name and his word are the same thing. We need to glorify him. We can only glorify him by honoring his word and doing what he says. So all last year was recalibration and realignment. How far have you got? This is 2020. Have you recalibrated? Have you realigned? Have you taken the word of God seriously? Have you applied it to your life? Or do the circumstances dictate to you and the frustrations and the traffic and the everything else, the kids, the whatever? Step aside, step aside and allow faith to glorify God in believing his word. Once you get used to it, and okay, I, I take that back because I'm still learning. But I'm sure once we get used to it, we'll be able to do it more regularly. And so today, all that we've been doing here, the Shana, Shekinah glory of God's been here in preparation for his visit and coming. But we're really on the King's Highway already. We're elevated above and beyond. We're walking as an army of one. The radiation of spiritual power ahead of us is far greater than we can understand or even imagine. Therefore, do not belittle yourself or what God has said, who you are and what you are. Walk on the King's Highway knowing that you have a powerful, powerful effect on the devil's kingdom and that you are part of his end time war. You are part of the sons and daughters being manifest to God on this earth, in nature, which is pleading and standing on tiptoe waiting for you to get there. I always say, Mulaney is a beautiful place. But if we bring the manifestation of sons and daughters into Mulaney, what would it happen to nature there? My goodness me, we can't even imagine. So let our imaginations grow with the heavenlies and help us to realize who we are in Him. Because He's always with us, He will never leave us, and He will never forsake us. And in John 14 it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You have the executive decision of your own heart. Do not be troubled. Jesus speaks to you and says, do not be troubled. And it's up to you to make that decision. And that's all it is. Either you're going to be troubled or you're going to move on side with the Lord by faith and give him all the glory. May that help you in your walk as you go through life now. And I've had to experience it maybe the hard way. But now when I went to the hospital on Monday, they said to me, the white cells are down. I've had normal temperatures, blood pressure, everything's normal, normal, normal. I said, are you wasting your time? I'm a very normal people. I just have funny feet. <laughs> so let's get them because God's going to give me new feet. Amen. I know that. And where's my friend? Is he gone already? Yes. The one who's praying for my feet. I put in an order for two toes. Now I've got an order for ten toes. So it's in and God's going to do that to his glory. But then if that happens, how 
how do I steward God's glory when I have proper feet and I've got the energy and the youth renewed like an eagle to glorify my God and my Father. May I do it with all the glory to Him and that I steward it correctly in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay there, Jen. You're not finished yet. <laughs> uh, if you were here last week, you might have heard Jen share at the end. If you didn't, just go back and check the live stream from last week where she uh, felt she was physically translated or transported into a house in South Africa. And you actually went through praying through the rooms and stuff. And, and what I want to encourage you and challenge you with today, and especially if you're watching on the live stream as well, you may look at yourself and your physical condition. But that doesn't need to hold you back. Because God can use you in such an incredibly powerful way. And we always say, well, I'll be an intercessor. Because I don't need to be physical to be an intercessor. But I just believe that's even holding God back. And, you know, so what I'd like you to do, Jen, is I would like you to just to pray for us. And even pray for the Christians in this region um, that they would just get the revelation of what the revelation that you've had mm. and the hope that you have now and, and the faith that's been built in you. And I just want you to release that over this meeting and indeed over the whole region, please. Let's just, let's just receive this in faith today. Daddy, Lord, Father God. We are your righteous children through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege that we are your children and we are your sons and daughters destined to manifest who we are in this earth to your honour and glory. And Father, we get so complicated sometimes by religion, big words, fancy sayings, courses, 10 steps, 12 steps. But Lord, really, it's just a personal intimacy with yourself. Not everybody's been forced into a personal intimacy with you, but we can, of our own accord, go into that place and just meet with you and just speak to you. We need to go in behind the veil. We need to be under you the wings, in your feathers, just discussing life with you and finding out where you want us to be and what our destiny is. And taking comfort that you are truly our Daddy, Lord. That the Lord Jesus intercedes for us. His blood is on the mercy seat and it's doing that for us. The Lord Jesus is so wonderful and mighty and I want to ride with him when he rides on his horse. I want to be part of that. And Lord, I just pray that many will see the vision of the days to come because we're truly in the days of Elijah. That the dry bones will arise I originally saw them still lying down there in the front of the platform with the flesh on, waiting for the breath of God. That's what we are all waiting for, that manifestation of the breath of God. And we are represented lying down there in the floor with flesh on. Each one of us is there represented, waiting for the power of God to bring us to the fullness of what we should be. And so, Father, we release that power tonight. We release the power of your Holy Spirit into each person who hears now that they can be Ezekiel's dry bones rising up into an almighty army, just like Joel's army, that will come forward with fire and flame, that we'll link together that we will march together on the glory highway for God. That we will sweep through the south, the south, the coastland here, the south coast of 
Australia here that we would be a mighty army, that the fire will go before us and sweep behind us on a dry and thirsty land, that the rivers of living water would flow from our valleys and revive the land as we pass through and bring the fullness of all the fruit that you have for us here. Lord, that the world will see and know that you are God and that your children will be manifested to your glory and your honor and nature will take on a new way that we will never have been able to understand before. So, Father, we release that power of your Holy Spirit into each one of us today that your word will become real, that it would not just be words, but that our hearts will take it in and we will take it and know we will ingest it and imbibe on it and be part of you, Lord. For we ask this in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be magnified, to him be glorified, that the world may see who is king. And we want to be those people who will march and ride with you into glory. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, amen, amen, amen.